All right, what's up everybody? I just picked up this Jackery Explorer 290 portable power station from Harbor Freight. So, just gonna unbox this and check out the features. All right, so on first opening the box, found a little baggie, pretty cool little case with the uh, charging connections. So you have an AC adapter to charge this at home off the wall and also a 12 volt adapter for charging in your vehicle. All right, so comes in some nice padding. Great little unit. I mean, man, that thing is tiny. Let's compare it. It's almost the exact same size as the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt 35 amp hour AGM battery. Now, mind you, this thing's a thousand pounds. The Jackery is so light compared to this guy. Ugh. But they are very similar size. Look at that. That's an interesting way to look at that comparison. So by weight, obviously this is massively heavier. And then they're, yet yeah, they're about the same size. So, and that doesn't include that you're gonna have to hook this up to stuff to be able to use the power. Whereas this, all the connections are here. So, so all the branding and the packaging just shows this is a standard Jackery product. It doesn't seem to indicate any exclusivity to Harbor Freight, but I haven't seen this model anywhere else, so very interesting. Yep. All right, so just turn it on for the first time. Showing it's charged at 37% out of the box. So that's interesting. So I got out a 12 volt fan just to run as a test subject here. All right. It's working. And the Jackery little indicator showing that it's using 27 watts. That's cool. Sorry, you can hear the fan buzzing. I'm turning it up. You can see the output went up because I turned the fan all the way up. And it shows zero input. So it has an input and an output wattage indicator. That's pretty cool. I mean, man, that's super simple. All right, turn the fan off. You can see the wattage draw drop down to zero again so what i like about these little power stations i've never had one before i have various 12 volt battery setups now for my van or for my trailer so the cool thing about this is this is all in one you don't need extra stuff i mean that's the obvious so the downside is it only has a 200 watt inverter but it is pure sine wave you can plug in your laptop your phone 12 volt fridge but just not uh, heavy duty stuff. You're not gonna be able to run a high draw type of appliance off of it, like blow dryer or power tools, right? So obviously it has its limitations, but it's so simplistic, it replaces all this other stuff. So just to prove a point, you know, I have the, uh, there's a 35 amp hour battery, which it's AGM. So you're only gonna be able to use, you know, effectively half of that. It's an equivalent of about a 24 amp hour lithium battery. And therefore you can go all the way down and then this has all your inputs and outputs all in one. Whereas this guy, you're gonna have to hook up stuff. Like I have it hooked up to a little 12 volt receptacle here. So obviously that's extra pieces. If you're just going camping or something, you just wanna be able to charge your phones and stuff without uh, running your vehicle power down. I mean, I think this is a no brainer. And obviously that gives you the option of hooking up a larger inverter. Whereas this is gonna be a 200 watt inverter, this you can hook up any size inverter. All right, so now I have the solar charge controller hooked up to the battery. So we have the charge controller, which is built into the Jackery. You have an inverter built into the Jackery. And you have a battery also inside the Jackery. So assuming that this Jackery meets your output needs, do you want all that or do you want this? So now I have the Jackery unit plugged into an AC charger in the wall. And you can see there that it is pulling 61 watts in. I have these on. I guess that's why you can turn these off so that they don't give out, they don't leak any watts. We're just going to do it with this 12 volt connection here. See how that goes. You see the little blue light came on. It's charging, showing 39 watts input there. So it looks like the input is limited with the 12 volt as well. And it's at a lower limit. It's at 39 watts input instead of 61 watts with the AC charging block here. All right, so reading the manual, looking at this, one thing they do not give you is a adapter to 
plug into this input, which is a larger size. This is a pretty, pretty big guy here and different than say the one that comes with the Harbor Freight connection kit. So I'm going to need an adapter to connect the solar panel to this. Theoretically, I should be able to go solar panel straight in to the input. All right, so I brought the Jackery inside, plug in my laptop, test out this AC input. So I plugged this in, I was like, why isn't it working? But you hit the power this on. And now my computer is showing that the laptop is charging. All right, so there it is, the output's at 38 watts. So compared to the solar charge controller uh, that, you know, they'll sell at Harbor Freight or even like this cheap Renji Wanderer, the Jackery actually has MPPT. So these are PWM, even this Wanderer, which is a decent unit, still a PWM. MPPT is just more efficient. So the Jackery stations are actually an upgrade over what I would have been using to charge with. So this is a lithium ion battery. It's not a uh, LifePo 4, but I think that's what keeps the cost down. Still shows it good for over 500 life cycles. I actually expected that would be higher, but this is greater than 500. You have a two year warranty, All right, it's pretty decent. All right, so now I'm in my van and I have the Jackery here and I'm just gonna plug in my 12 volt refrigerator. So let's just turn this down so we can get the compressor to kick on. See what type of draw it pulls from the Jackery unit. Bridge compressor is on. You see a 48 or 49 watt draw there. You can even run the 12 volt fridge off of uh, the Jackery. So there it's already down to 41 watts, 40 watts. And then obviously when the compressor shuts down, it'll be even lower draw. So it seems like probably the biggest limitation is just that you really can't use over 200 watts. But I have to say this is a pure sine wave. So I have a much larger inverter here in my van it's 1100 watts but that's a modified sine wave so really i shouldn't even be plugging my laptop into that uh should be more something like this well it should be a pure sine wave anyway all right so i got this little usb light bulb you know imagine you're in some sort of a you just want a basic disaster prep type of scenario so oh look at that and now we have light all right so right now, running my fridge off of it in my van, right down to 34 degrees already. <laughs> so one thing to consider if you're going to use the Harbor Freight solar panel to charge this jacker unit is that you're going to need an adapter wire of some kind. Harbor Freight solar panel has an SAE connection, so you're going to need an 8 millimeter. And it looks like the cheapest ones I'm finding are around $15, and a lot are more than that. So just something to consider. Okay, so it appears that this Jackery 290 is something maybe exclusive to Harbor Freight or maybe they just haven't launched it anywhere else. But there's an Explorer 300 and an Explorer 240. And this appears to be essentially an Explorer 240 because it has a 200 watt pure sine wave inverter and it has the same connections, two USBs, one AC. Whereas the Jackery 300 is available with two AC outputs and it's 293 watt hours. Well, this is 290 watt hours. So I would say the battery capacity of this one into this one. So it's priced at 250 at Harbor Freight. So it sits right in between. You just want to be able to grab and go. And this is the way to do it. Especially if you have no knowledge of 12 volt things, you don't want to like get into learning solar or researching what type of inverters you need and all these things. This is your guy.